Thank you, worship team. Good morning again, everyone. Grab a seat. It's Missions Weekend. It's one of my favorites of the year, and uh, usually I line up a guest speaker to come and share with you someone who's been there on the far reaches of the earth and seen God's faithfulness in some amazing ways. This year, I felt like I wanted to share from my own heart and uh, just share with you guys what the Lord's put on my heart in terms of us engaging as a church with our missions ministry and the faithful people who have been called to go and have answered that call and have gone, some next door and some to the other side of the world. And so uh, if you're new to Horizon, if you don't know who I am, my name's Stephen. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. And usually I do the announcements and I bring the podium out and then I'm done for the morning until the next service. Um, but I'm excited to open God's Word with you this morning. In two months' time, at the end of September... It'll be my 10-year anniversary on staff here at Horizon. Thank you. And I can't begin to tell you how blessed I am. Not only myself, but my wife, who grew up in this church. Some of you remember 14-year-old Esther serving in children's ministry. Brad and Didi are nodding. They remember. Uh, and this church has been so good to my family. And I've seen my kids grow up here. I have a 5-year-old daughter named Piper who thinks she runs this place, uh, and a three-year-old son, Oliver, who will be out at his grandpa and grandma's table in the courtyard after the service with his captain's hat on, ready to uh, answer any questions you might have about the ship ministry that my wife grew up on. She went to 70 countries by her 10th birthday, which she spent in Uruguay uh, on board this vessel that God has faithfully stewarded ar around the world for the last 50 years. And my father-in-law is the captain of the ship uh, much of the time and has faithfully been all around the world for 40 years captaining this ship. And that's where I met my wife, Esther, uh, right after high school. I wasn't ready for college and so uh, went off for a year to serve the Lord, uh, scrub some decks and see the world. And uh, I fell in love with the captain's daughter. Uh, <laughs> and I've been polishing brass ever since. Uh, <laughs> But the joke's on him because now I'm the missions pastor at his sending church. So who's the captain now? <laughs> but 10 years ago, sitting in Pastor Bob's office, two days before he married Esther and I, and he offered me a job, uh, which I was not keen on at first. Uh, but the Lord works in our heart, right? When he's got a plan for us, he lays it out in front of us. And sometimes he needs to uh, turn the screw a little bit to, uh, to get us to put aside what we have planned and to step into the calling that he's placed on our lives. And 10 years has gone by in a flash. Uh, but it's been so cool to be a part of what God is doing at this church and through this church. And so we're going to spend some time in God's Word because it wouldn't be Horizon Church if we didn't open God's Word and start there. Amen? Because all truth, all wisdom, all knowledge and understanding and direction comes from God's Word. So get your Bible out if you need one. The ushers are in the aisles. They would love to get you a copy of God's Word. We're going to be in the book of Romans together this morning, and my goal is to end early. I know pastors say that all the time, uh, but I'd be doing a disservice to our missionaries if uh, I took up all the time this morning, because they've traveled some near and some far to be with us and to share the stories of God's faithfulness in their ministries, some amazing stories, and some hardships. You know, we have missionaries that are serving in some difficult countries. Some of you know the Harper family. I think they'll be with us for one of the services this morning. They just flew in from Belarus, and that is a tough place to be standing for the gospel right now. Uh, so we want you to commit to pray for them. We want you to meet them. We want you to hear their story. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end early uh, this morning, but the first thing I want to do is pray with you. Lord, we just come before you right now on this missions weekend. Lord, we're excited for the stories and the reports of your faithfulness and the growth and the revival and the move of the Spirit that is happening all around the world. Lord, we often hear the negative when we turn on the TV or uh, social media. We see the hardship. We see um, the things that are going wrong in the world. Uh, Lord, and we know that we will have trials and we will have tribulations in this life. But you have called us and given us a purpose to reach the lost, Lord, and that is happening every day. People are coming to Christ. You are moving and at work, and we're excited for that, Lord. And so we pray that as we look at your word and are reminded of what it means to be a sending church, to be a place of mission, uh, Lord, we just ask that you'd be uh, in this time and speak through me. Lord, may it be your words, may it be your challenge, not mine. This morning we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So 
over the last two weeks, as you know, we've had VBS, and as I said before, that's one of the largest missions outreaches we do every year, because some of the kids at church, some of them are your kids, and they come here every weekend, and we're loving to seeing what God is doing and growing them up and nurturing their faith, but so many of the kids who come are just in this community, and they get invited, their neighbors, their school friends, and they come and they see the gospel come to life. They're in here worshiping, they're memorizing scripture, and they're seeing this production, and they're asking questions, and they're being prayed over. And I know that many of you were praying throughout the week for these kids that God would touch them and lives would be saved, and uh, we definitely saw that over these last couple weeks. As the kids learnt about the life of Paul, the conversion from Saul, the persecutor, to Paul, the missionary. And if you came to one of the openers that we had the last two Sunday nights, they told the story of Stephen, right? A simple guy, wiped the tables. He was a waiter, but God gave him the gift of teaching, and he boldly proclaimed the gospel, and it cost him his life. With kindergartners in the room, that was beanbags with the lights turned off. Uh, but the message is the same, of sacrifice and of answering the call. And then Steve shared with us last weekend, if you missed it, Pastor Steve, our children's pastor, opened the word with us last weekend. You can catch it at the archive on YouTube if you want to want to see that he shared some of what the kids were learning, right, of that dramatic transformation where Saul, the persecutor, encounters God on the road to Damascus, where Jesus presents himself and says, I have a different calling for your life, and, uh, and he humbles himself, and, and he becomes one of the greatest missionaries in the history of the church, if not the greatest, right? We have so much recorded for us in Scripture of his, of his journeys, and I wish we could have more weeks of VBS, right, because think of all the different stories we could do. There's shipwrecks, and there's earthquake shaking prison walls and so many amazing things where God shows up in the life of Paul. And maybe those will be in years to come here for our VBS. Um, but if you've been at the church for a while, over the last couple of years during our midweek Bible studies, we've been studying through Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, these books, these amazing letters that Paul writes to these churches that he started, that he's coming alongside, that he's ministering to, but asking them to repay the favor, right? to be a part of seeing the gospel continue to grow and the church grow in its infancy all throughout the known world. Paul's an example for us of a pastor, of a teacher, a friend, a mentor, a great missionary, a tent maker, right? He didn't have all the money in the world. He trusted on the Lord and used the gifts that he had to follow through on the calling on his life. And he was instrumental in launching the global church. So we read through these books. Why? Why do we read them? We read them to learn godly wisdom for what a church should look like. Some of these churches made mistakes, right? They weren't perfect. And Paul gently, lovingly, sometimes not so gently, gave them correction, right, of how they needed to conduct themselves, how they needed to live, and how they needed to be a part of the global church and all that God was accomplishing. And that's true for us today. We want to be a generous church, and God's been so faithful. This church has been here for more than 25 years, and in that time, has given millions and millions and millions of dollars to missions. And we're grateful for that. That's awesome. God has faithfully used this church to provide financially for many of the mission organizations that are out in the courtyard and so many more who couldn't be with us this weekend. But it's more than that. We're called to be an active church, right? It takes each and every one of us. God has gifted us and called us to go into our neighborhoods, into our communities, to be an active church, to be looking actively for people in need, people who are down and out, people who need to be loved on in the name of Jesus and to be active in that. He's called us to be a praying church, right? We know because we hear it all the time and we've seen it in our lives that there is power in prayer and that we're to pray for one another. We're to intercede on behalf of these missionaries and these organizations that are on the front lines of social and spiritual battlefields. We're to pray for them and we're to be an outreach church, right? This room would get smaller and smaller and smaller if there wasn't outreach because God calls us to different places. People have moved to other states. People have gone uh, to other fields. Uh, and so God continues to bring new people. And if you're new this morning, welcome to Horizon. We're glad that you're here. This is a church to call home and to grow in. Uh, but we have to do outreach, right? It's what we've been called to do, to go into all the world, to preach the gospel. And that's why we do the Living Nativity and why we do VBS, Harvest Festival and the worship in the ranch events last year, those were incredible, and we saw people come to Christ by being invited out to an outreach event like that. Because if you're new to Horizon, maybe you don't know that our mission statement here is to win, disciple, and send. We want to win people for Christ through presenting the gospel, giving them that opportunity to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and then disciple them in the Word, that they would grow, that they would develop and be nourished as they grow in the Word. 
and then send them out. It doesn't stop with discipleship. We've got to go into all the world. That's the commission that we've been given. And it looks different for every one of us, and we're going to explore that a little bit this morning. But turn to Romans chapter 10 with me, if you would. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 15. And it kind of lays it out for us. If you confess with your mouth, it says in verse 9, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right? That's what winning is about. The gospel message is simple. Pray, humble yourself, let that work happen first in your heart. Right? That's where it happens. The work of conviction that the Holy Spirit does in our hearts, right? Of making us realize that we have a sinful nature and that God is calling us to a different life. And that work happens in our heart, and then it's proclaimed out of our mouth, right? We pray for Jesus to come into our hearts. We pray that prayer, and we receive salvation. But that confession isn't just something we do once. We do it once for salvation, but then God has called us to do it every day, to take up our cross daily, to spread the gospel, to tell people about the hope that we have within us. That confession, that proclamation, that declaration is a daily thing that we are to continue in. Verse 11 it says, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Right? How many of us have been prompted by the Spirit to help somebody, to do something, to step out in faith, and we've thought, I'm, I'm not qualified. There's too much shame. You don't know what I've done wrong. Right? But Christ has paid that. He's taken the shame. Those who believe on him will not be put to shame. We have freedom from sin and shame because of what Christ has done. What he's done releases us for a life of significance and service, right? We're called to action, church. God equips the called rather than calling the equipped. Have you ever heard that before? Right, so often we feel unqualified. It's like, when I'm ready, when I'm the finished product, Lord, then you can use me. No, the, the saying is, here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I in my weakness, in my brokenness, in my inability, you're made strong and you can use me. You will equip me as you send me, not before you send me, because we're never the finished product. If we continue reading, it says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen, church? Amen. And that's the win component. That's the outreach. That's a third of what we're trying to do here. Get people saved, right? Have them, the scales fall from their eyes and see that only, the only true hope, the only true truth is found in God's word and in a relationship with him. That's why we do these outreach events. And missions is all about winning the lost. But how are we going to do that? Whose job is that? Is it just Pastor Bob or whatever evangelist or preacher we bring out for a night of worship to, to share God's word? Do we really need Billy Graham's grandson to come? We do. We love having Will here. But it's not just on him or just on Pastor Bob. It's on all of us, right? We've all been called to go. We need disciples. And that's why discipleship comes in. If we want to win people, we need disciples who are going to do it. And that takes time, right? That's intentional discipleship. It doesn't mean you can't start preaching the gospel the moment you receive salvation, but we're to be growing and nurtured, right? That's the discipleship part of it. We're to grow in the word and in our relationship with the Lord. That never stops. We never arrive. We're saved, but we're still susceptible to our carnal nature, right? We're not perfect. We still sin. We still fall short. We need to be nurtured in the word because if we have that foundation, that is built on God's word, we can withstand the fiery arrows of the evil one and we can grow in the calling that God has on our lives. For time, we're not going to turn there, but if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, maybe you look at it later on, Paul is talking to the young church in Corinth, right, who've been fed the milk, right? He's basically given them the gospel, right? And the Holy Spirit is moving, people are getting saved, but their faith is simple, right? They've got the basics, the fundamentals, but they're still in many ways living in their, in their flesh. They weren't ready for the solid food of the word. And that's what we need to grow to be able to digest and apply in our lives. The young church in Corinth, they were filled with envy and strife and divisions, sectarianism and, and claiming credit, right? They all wanted to, to be part of different groups and I'm, I'm with him and, and I'm with him and, and, and he gets the credit and, and, and look what we did. And Paul is correcting them and saying, it's not about that. One person plants, another waters, but it's God who brings the increase, right? We're not, we're not looking to place credit or to give credit, uh, nor do we want to be divided. And we want to be of one mind, working together 
that God would accomplish something incredible in our midst. We're to be God's fellow workers, it goes on to say. His field, his building, right? We've got an amazing building. We've got some amazing fields. But God's called us to be the field. God's called us to be the building, to walk out of this place after we're filled up and we're, we're overflowing with joy and with truth and with hope. We're to go out into the world. We're instructed to progress from the milk of babes to the solid food of a mature Christian. In Hebrews chapter 5 and 6, the author of Hebrews reminds us that everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. It goes on to say in Hebrews chapter 6 that if we don't have a solid foundation and fall into our old fleshly ways, we crucify again the Son of God and put Him to shame. And that's why we gather every weekend, that we'd grow, that we'd put the old things away, that we would become disciples and our relationship would grow deep and our understanding of God's Word would grow deep and that we would together hold up one another's arms uh, into all that God has called us to. God's Word also cautions us about becoming fat on the Word, right? Right? We could be tempted to to come to church every Sunday and listen to the message and be encouraged and be challenged and we kind of tick that box and we're like, all right, back into the week ahead. I'm, I'm ready to go. But we're not to become fat on the word. We're to receive it and digest it and be fueled by it, but we're to go and give it out, right? We're to go and be in the world and not of the world. So how do we do that? How do we get sent? How do we send people? What does that look like? Well, let's go back to our text in Romans Chapter 10, now in verse 14, it says, How shall they call on him, right? The lost, the people who need Jesus. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. That's what our missionaries are doing. That's what all of us are called to do, right? To take those glad tidings, to take that good news message to everyone that we encounter. We've got to go. We've got to step out in faith. And uh, it looks different for all of us. We're a sending church. We prioritize sending. We always have. But for that statement to be true, it takes all of us. It's not just the job of one person to send. It's the job of all of us to send ourselves, to send each other uh, into the world, to to build up one another's confidence through exhortation that God is going to use you in spite of your weakness, in spite of your shortcomings. And there's a lot of ways that he uses each and every one of us. Faithful giving, right? That's huge. Uh, So often we think of missions in terms of giving. Like, man, these missionaries are going. They need financial support to go. And that's absolutely true. We want to support them. We want to come alongside them and meet their physical needs, right? Provide those, those resources. But there's more to it than that. There's so many spiritual gifts that can be applied to the role of missions and to the mission that is placed before us. If you're in Romans chapter 10, jump a few pages to the right to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many of you have that memorized? How many of you know that off by heart? Well, you, along with 600 VBS kids who had that memory verse the last two weeks and have it buried, hidden in their heart, that they'll never forget it. God's word never returns void. They know that to be true. 600 kids reached with that message this last two weeks. It goes on to say, for I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in the body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. We're a family. This is the family of God, and we have a mission, right? How many of you and your families, you know, maybe you have a family meeting, right? It's family business time. We're going to sit down and talk about some things, and uh, we do that every weekend here, but certainly once a year when we gather specifically to talk about missions and, and how we're moving around the world and how God's br- brought these strategic partnerships along uh, for us, 
He's gifted all of us differently, and we can all play a part in helping to send these faithful people and to go ourselves. Verse 6 says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. That's a big list. That's a lot of things that are needed in the family for us to grow and to thrive and to step into all that God would desire to do through us as a church. And there's a long list. The guys are going to throw it up on the screen. And you're going to identify with some of these, and some of them you're going to go, that's not me. That's not how I work. That's not how God's why and me. But maybe you have the spiritual gift of leadership and shepherding. What, is it, what could that look like for you? How do you step into that? How do you apply those gifts in the body of Christ and here in the church family? Maybe it's joining our men's and women's ministry. Maybe it's becoming a men's or women's leader. Maybe you've been coming for years and sitting in that small group and it's time for you to be a leader. Maybe that's in the Awana ministry that starts up in a couple of weeks where hundreds of kids will gather every Wednesday night with their Awana book and their vest and all that cute stuff that happens in children's ministry. God is doing amazing things. If you sit down and talk to one of those Awana kids, you'll be blown away by how much of God's word they know in their heart. Maybe you have the gift of administration, and maybe that looks like coming alongside one of our missionaries by providing logistical support. I'm going to call her out because she's sitting right over here, but Dee Dee Dotson, we had a young man uh, a number of years ago who God called uh, to go to Macau and uh, to take his skateboard with him and to lead young people to Christ. And he led hundreds of young people to Christ, but he was not very organized. He wouldn't mind me saying that, I don't think. He's an awesome dude, and God's still using him in missions. But Didi, who has the gift of administration, came alongside him and said, let me send you a newsletter. Let me keep in touch with people for you. Let me help facilitate the administrative side of going to the mission field. She used that gifting. Maybe you have the gift of teaching. Again, children's or small groups. Maybe teaching at Horizon Prep. Don't forget, we have open positions. Maybe you have the gift of knowledge. Maybe you've been discipled for a lot of years and you, you really know God's word. Share that with somebody. Disciple somebody. Find somebody 10 or 20 years younger than you that's walking through what you walked through and you can help them walk through that because you have that knowledge. Maybe you've got the gift of wisdom or discernment. Do some counseling. Come alongside people. Share what you know with them and help them to walk through a difficult time. Prophecy, exhortation, encouragement, and building people up helping them step into the calling on their life. So many people are timid and afraid. So many people in this generation are filled with anxiety, and they're not ready to, to step out in faith. Maybe they need some exhortation, and maybe you have that gift. Or you have the gift of evangelism. Get into missions, street ministry. Go join the San Diego Rescue Mission on the streets of San Diego, coming alongside people who are experiencing homelessness, people who are suffering from mental illness. There is so much of that in our community. There is a huge need for evangelists to go and to share the message. Maybe you have the gift of service and helps. You like to be behind the scenes. You like to make things happen. Maybe that's volunteering here at the church or, or at the rescue mission or at different ministries that are dying for volunteers who have a huge field ripe under harvest but very few laborers. Use that gifting that you have. Come alongside them. Maybe you've got the gift of mercy. You feel compassion for people who are down and out, people who are poor, people who are hurting, downtrodden. Come alongside people. Share that love that God has given you. Maybe you have the gift of giving. You're successful and God is using you in business or in other things and you have a lot of resource to give. There's a lot of great causes for you to come alongside and help to fund and to financially invest in to see God's kingdom grow. Maybe you have the gift of hospitality. You can open your home to somebody. You can be hospitable. There was a gentleman who, in our church who came up to the welcome table last weekend and we were chatting. He said, you know, we've just finished building an ADU at our house. We've got a little granny flat and we just finished construction. We don't even have furniture in it yet, but I want to make it available to missions. I want missionaries to stay in our house. And that's awesome. He's using the gift of hospitality that God has given him to welcome people. And maybe you don't know your spiritual gifts. I pray that you would seek the Lord, that you would ask him to reveal to you what your spiritual gifts are. Know what they are and cultivate them. Grow them. Begin to use them 
for his glory. You already are, I'm sure, but we can all take an extra step. We can all step out of our comfort zone. We can all push ourselves a little bit further because the days are few, right? We're living in the last days. Christ's return is near at hand, and there's an urgency to this gospel message being preached around the world and here, right? San Diego needs revival. Amen, church? As 1 Corinthians 13 would remind us, we can go and do all those things. We can serve the homeless downtown. We can go to the uttermost parts of the earth. There's a mission trip going to Guatemala. David Peterson's a guy in our church. He's standing in the back. He grew up here. And God has given him a burden and a heart for the people of Guatemala. He's gone a couple times. He's taken a team in November. And uh, this is the last weekend to sign up. Snap decision. Maybe God's calling you to go to Guatemala. Talk to David after the service. But whatever it is, Whatever we go and do, 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us if we don't have love, it's all for nothing, right? We have to be loving in every one of those encounters. That's what God's called us to. Let's see an example in Scripture of a church that cared well for our missionary that we're talking about this morning, right? For Paul. He's traveling all around the known world, planting churches, and there's a great church that comes alongside him, right? The church at Philippi sends aid to Paul, Uh, for his missionary journeys. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, it says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard of need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul mastered contentment, right? We can all do a little bit better at contentment. There's so many things in this world that we think we need or we think we want, but Paul says it's not about need. I don't need these things, right? I have learned that God will provide, that he will go before me. He's never going to leave me short. He's never going to leave me hanging, We'll have persecution, we'll have troubles. Paul certainly had his fair share, but he always had what he needed. Paul goes on to say, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account, right? God doesn't need our gift. Hudson Taylor, a faithful missionary, I'm sure you've heard of Hudson Taylor, 51 years he served on the mission field in China. He once said, depend on it. God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. He is too wise a God to frustrate his purposes for a lack of funds, and he can just as easily supply them ahead of time as afterward. And he much prefers doing so. God will always meet the need of the calling and the mission that he places before somebody. But he likes to use us. He gives us that opportunity to partake and be participants in the amazing, fruitful ministry that's happening all around us. I think you know it to be true. We say it all the time. I say it to my kids all the time. It's more blessed to give than to receive, right? We all know the huge blessing that comes from giving. And I tell you what, the missionaries this morning, they're not in the courtyard to beg for your money, right? They didn't come here solely to get a check. I guarantee you they'll take it if you write one. But that's not why they came this morning. They came for partnership. They came so that they could share with you, that they could build a relationship with you, that they could invite you into the ministry that God's called them to do because it takes boldness. And some of them are lonely. I don't know if you know this, but many missionaries suffer from loneliness, suffer from, from feeling on the outs, right? They go into this other culture. They feel alone. They feel isolated. We can pray for them. We can send them that email. It takes two minutes to send an email that says, I'm praying for you. God is using you. Go into all the world. Be bold. Be faithful. We're right there with you. That's what we're called to do. That's what they're looking for this morning. They're looking for a holistic approach to support, that we would take the spiritual gifts that God has given us and use them in the sending of these faithful men and women. If we keep reading in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphrodites the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. 
And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. It's talking about sacrificial giving, right? He's saying to them, you lacked opportunity, but now you've had a chance to give. And because he says, my God will supply all your need, he's telling them, you've given to me, probably sacrificially, but God will provide for your need. I'm a firm believer that you will never give yourself into poverty if you're giving to the causes that God's put on your heart. If he gives you a burden for one of these missionaries, one of these organizations, if he gives you a heart to come alongside them and see their ministry grow and flourish and take on new opportunities and reach even more people, if you give to that, you'll never give yourself into poverty. God will bless you right back. And it's not why we do it. We don't do it for the blessing. We do it because it's more blessed to give than to receive. And God will take care of our need. My mom reminded me a few days ago, she's staying with us at the moment, and my parents, I grew up on the mission field in Kazakhstan. I lived there for 11 years uh, while I was growing up, and my parents stepped out in faith, and churches just like this uh, supported us and sent us out. They met our financial need, they prayed for us, they supported us, and they welcomed us home with the gift of hospitality when it was time for our furlough to come home and regroup and see my grandma and all that good stuff. So we now, I was probably six or seven, we went to the mission field when I was five and probably six or seven coming home on the first furlough and we landed and spent time with family until it was Sunday and then we went to our church and I remember walking into the sanctuary, it was smaller than this by a little bit, but there was a balcony and we walked in and we turned around and hanging over the balcony was a giant sign that said something like, welcome home Patterson family. It was pretty awesome. I don't remember what the sign said, to be honest. It said something like that. I was more concerned with what the sign was made of. All of those letters were made with coins. Just like our VBS, these kids bringing in nickels for every stuffed animal they have and bringing in dimes for every light bulb in their house and quarters for every pair of shoes and a dollar on the last day for every year old that they are. That's how we got to $9,400 in giving from children in just two weeks. So over the next few days, my older brother and I, we picked those coins off this giant. I mean, I was seven, so it seemed giant to me. I don't know how big it really was, but it was huge to me. And we picked all those coins off and we went to Toys R Us or something and bought some toys. And it meant so much to me as a missionary kid coming home and uh, and being loved on and being blessed in that way. So I want to share a couple of updates with you guys and let you know who's out there in the courtyard because every good message has application. And the application couldn't be more clear this morning that God is calling you, each and every one of you, to come alongside, to be more involved, more invested in what God is doing through this church, through amazing men and women who have come to share that with us this morning. Many of you know Susie Cooch. She's a missionary of ours in South Sudan. She was with us a few months ago here, but she's currently on the field in Sudan. And uh, I just want to share some of the pictures. So many of our missionaries have Instagram or social media, you can see pictures and pray for all that's going on in their ministries. You can find more about them on the Horizon website. But this is Susie, and uh, that's where God's called her. She's been there for 20 years, loving on the people of South Sudan. And God is growing their ministry. This is their hospital. For many years, they've had a medical clinic that Horizon has supported, and Horizon Prep does a spirit run every year to raise money for their medical clinic. But in the last couple of years, they've turned into a hospital. This is their pastoral training. All those guys were trained this last year to go out and plant churches all across South Sudan. This is their new church that opened on Easter Sunday, 2022. Faithful prayers answered. Look at that building. They would never have imagined even five years ago that they would have something like this, but God has provided, and that church was filled with thousands of people. There are wings for people to sit outside. So many people came. They went down to the river afterwards and baptized hundreds of people. Amazing stories. There's a truck filled with bricks that they have a machine that makes. You can't quite see it's out of the frame, but it's stuck in the mud. And uh, this is the uh, the toilets being built, the last thing to get built, the latrine. So uh, next time you go into our bathrooms and we're out of the uh, the breath mints, just remember, it could be a whole lot worse. (laughs) I want to share another video with you guys from Rose Martinez, a missionary of ours in Thailand and Cambodia. She's been there for 30 years or more, and uh, God's been using her. So check this out. Good morning from MMF School. 
This is the morning class of about 70 kids with the teachers, and we are blessed and privileged to serve uh, the Bosbian community. And thank you for your love, for your prayers, and all that you do for us. Bye-bye. God bless you. You see the adults standing along the back row? Those were kids in that school 20 years ago, and they've gone off to university, and they've come back, and they're now teaching the next generation of orphan kids that are in that school. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that God's faithfulness at work? There's so many more missionaries that couldn't be with us, but thankfully so many are with us. We have 15 missionaries with us out in the courtyard this morning. Sue Ficino is here from Ensenada, Mexico, or Maniadero, an area just south of Ensenada, and she works with special needs kids. And many of you have gone down and visited her and seen what God is doing through her, but she's just acquired a new property for her equestrian ministry uh, for kids with special needs, and she needs a house built. The foundation is laid, so if you're handy, grab your tools, grab some buddies, and uh, go talk to Sue and go down and build her a house. She also needs an SUV because she transports kids all the time, and her minivan, the doors don't open, and we'd like to get her a new one. So one of you maybe has an SUV that you're not using. Go give it to Sue this morning. Maybe you'll go out and talk to Holt International. They have child sponsorship programs, and you can sponsor a kid today and change their life. Walk with them as they grow up in whatever country they're in. You can be a part of their life this morning. Hope Start is out there. They work, they have an orphanage in Haiti, and uh, they're doing awesome work. Go find out more about that. Agape Project International. Gary and Leslie Shearer have been in our church for many years, and they take medical mission trips to Kenya, and they save so many lives, not only physically, but spiritually, as they preach the gospel there in Kenya. Crew Military is out there. It's a new partnership for Horizon. Uh, Glenn is out there at the table, and he's the crew military director for San Diego. He works down at MCRD with new recruits, with 18-year-old uh, Marine recruits who are shaken, to say the least, as they leave everything behind and join the armed forces. He's walking alongside them, and we'd love for you to find out more about that. The San Diego Rescue Mission is here. Donnie is their president. He preached last weekend on Missions Weekend, and God continues to use the rescue mission in some amazing ways. God is growing it. They're engaging so many people. They have their graduation every year, and it's a huge blessing. Find out more about that. Ron and Gina Rackley are uh, a family in our church. Gina's been on staff here for 20 years, and they work with youth. They have uh, a, a ministry called Teen Impact, and we'd love for you to find out more about that. Alliance Defending Freedom and Salt and Light are out there, and they work with uh, voting rights and, and, and religious freedom, uh, a lot of petitioning of politicians and, and representatives, and uh, have some great resources on how to engage in the social and political uh, issues of today. And so we'd love for you to chat with them. Kids Alive is out there. I mentioned David earlier. Join up on the trip to, Gu to Guatemala and find out more about what they're doing to, uh, to rescue girls, victims of sex trafficking down in Guatemala. They're also working with local prosecutors to raise the level of prosecution for offenders in that country. True Choice Medical Clinics are out there as well. We've partnered with them now for about a year or two, and if you've been watching the news at all, you know that there's no time like the present to get involved in pro-life things and to come alongside a clinic like that that's doing amazing work. So find out how you can help them. The Newman family are out there. They serve in, uh, in Thailand, and Ryan's mom and dad are at the table and would love to share with you about the church planning efforts that are going on all across Thailand that the Newman family are a part of. And last but not least, my in-laws, the Dyers, uh, find out about the ship ministry, and we just sent a guy from our youth group who grew up here at the church for a year and a half to serve on board. We'll see if he breaks the rules like I did and falls in love with the captain's daughter. I'm thinking probably not, but we'll see. So we're going to close here in just a moment. We're ending a little bit early. Uh, I just about hit my mark. Uh, but I want to encourage you. Children's ministry might not be happy with me saying this, but don't go pick up your kids right away. Do pick them up. We don't want to keep them. But take a few minutes and visit the tables. You know, it's not a college fair. You don't have to go to every single one. If you want to, more credit to you. But pray that the Holy Spirit would show you one or two. Sign up for their newsletters. Make a commitment this morning and follow through to walk alongside them as God uses them to reach the lost. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that your word shows us so clearly that it's important that we reach the lost. Evangelism is important. Discipleship is important. But it doesn't end there, Lord. You've called us to go, to send people into every corner of the world and here in San Diego. 
to not just wait for the people to come on this campus, but go and find the hurting, go and find the lost, go and find the downtrodden, those in need of hope, of which it feels like in this society today, we've never had so many people lacking hope, lacking truth, filled with anxiety. Uh, Lord, we know that the answers are found in the pages of your word. And we don't simply want to read them and keep them to ourselves. We want to go and proclaim all that you have taught us, all that you are revealing to us. And so we pray for every conversation, every connection in the courtyard this morning. Lord, may it bring change, may it bring growth. And uh, Lord, we know that you have used this church over so many years in incredible ways. It's not that there's lack, Lord, but there's always more opportunity. And so we pray that as we discover that this morning, that you would light a fire, that you would bring the increase to the seeds that have faithfully been planted and watered. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen.